Right, yes. And this is where I will sound a bit like a law professor. Now, uh, some of you will know that there is a case called Texas uh, v. White. Uh, in, in England, by the way, we say and, so we're, we're slightly different there. But so Texas and White, I will call it. So there was a, a case, uh, it was to do with, with bonds and so on. It's, it's actually not to do with independence back in 1868. Uh, and Chase, who was the, uh, the uh, chief justice at the time, was penning this uh, famous judgment there. Now, if I, uh, if I, when I read that particular judgment uh, by the US Supreme Court, uh, I was slightly puzzled because he talks about there being a permanent, uh, perfect union of states. And then in his judgment, the, uh, the, um, the learned judge uh, goes on to refer to the um, Articles of Confederation uh, as the basis upon which he makes his decision. Now, in very simple constitutional terms, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding like a constitutional lawyer, which is what I am, but... Uh, but, but nevertheless, um, if you are refer if you are a lawyer, then you base your legal reasoning on the existing legal um, framework on the existing constitution. Now, as you all know, uh, the American Constitution was uh, drawn up in Philadelphia in in seventeen. Um, 87. And that is the thing that the only thing upon which you can base your judgment. The articles of confederation are null and void. They just, they just basically been superseded uh, by another constitutional order. So there was a constitutional break uh, at that time. So therefore, if in reading that particular case, uh, and indeed also some of, some of the subsequent cases where they refer to that, um, just basically is not um, is not good law. Uh, if uh, if Chief Justice Chase was one of my students, he wouldn't do quite as well as Daniel Miller in my class, and he would probably get a D for that particular assignment.